Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen and today I'm gonna to show you how I was able to save over 250 different varieties of tomatoes in just a couple of weeks. Some of you might already know I have two really large gardens and I absolutely love tomatoes. I love to grow a ton of different varieties of tomatoes. I probably grew over 400 different kinds this year. I knew how much work it was last year and I think last year I saved maybe 80 to 90, 80 to 100 different varieties and it was a lot of work. There's a couple of different ways that you can save seeds. One, you can just pick them out of the tomato um, and wash them off really well. That's not really, I would never do that because I want to share the seeds and their seeds can carry disease and that little gel that's on the outside of them. So it's preferred to ferment them. So that's what I did last year. I fermented lots and lots of jars. There was jars everywhere in my house. And if you've ever fermented tomatoes, seeds, you know that after a couple of days, it starts to stink. So my kitchen where I had all the jars just smelled for weeks, which is fine. And I have done that some this year as well. I have fermented in jars, but mostly I've been doing this. So I came across this last year and I thought, oh, that's gonna be so helpful this year when I'm trying to save over 300 different varieties of tomatoes. Cleaning your seeds with OxyClean. It's quick, they say. It's easy, they say. And I thought, well, let's see how easy it is. They say that OxyClean is even better at killing diseases that are carried on seeds than fermentation. I don't know if that's true, but I do know that I wanted to kill the diseases on the, the seeds. It also makes the seeds last longer, that you can store them for many, many years and they'll still retain their germination rate. And it keeps them from getting moldy to have clean seeds because there's like a gel coating. Let me get one here. I have some tomatoes here I was taking Instagram pictures for. Let's see, but you can see there's gel. So the that covering is what protects the seeds throughout winter or through going through an animal's digestive tract so that when the seeds come back out, they can then um, germinate at the you know right temperature, right conditions. It's a protective thing for the seeds, but if you try to store them with that gel coating on it, it's the, you know it can get moldy, it can make the seeds not um, viable a lot quicker. So you wanna get rid of that gel coating. I gotta say, I was super impressed with this. Um, I was able to save 50 different varieties of tomato seeds each day for like a week. And let me show you how I did it. It was pretty easy. The stuff you'll need, you'll need jars, something to um, hold your seeds and goo in, masking tape to label the jars. So I've been labeling the jars with masking tape, Sharpie or a pen or something to write with on the masking tape. I would also say don't wear nice clothes when you're doing this because sometimes the tomatoes, when you like go to scrape them out, they can just shoot everywhere. <laughs> and you'll have tomato seeds stuck to your chest. A scrap bowl for the parts of the tomato that you don't wanna keep or any rotten tomatoes, stuff like that. Cause you can still save seeds from rotten tomatoes. And then what I've been doing is a Ziploc baggie where I put the part of the tomato that I do want to keep. I've been using these big two gallon Ziploc baggies, filling them up and then putting them in the freezer so that I have a bunch of tomatoes ready to can when winter comes and I need something to do. <laughs> so what I can say is this, this method works. It cleans the seeds up really, really nice as well as it doesn't damage the seeds in any way. When I first did this, I only did it with a few varieties and then I actually put some of the seeds that I had done it with in dirt to see if they germinate and they did, all of them. First part of it is uh, the, the same as you would if you were gonna ferment. The only difference with this is the amount of time it takes to do this is cut into minutes as opposed to days. Because when you ferment seeds, you have to leave them sit in the, it varies between four to seven days, they say. Really, you'll know um, when your jars are ready because they start to get this really funky smell and they get like this moldy, gooey, gross stuff on top of them. I'll just show you exactly what I do. Sometimes I'll even reuse the tape. So if there's enough room to write something on the piece of tape, I'll just scratch out the last wording and then I'll write down which one I'm saving now. So this one, I'm gonna save the CAS21, C-A-S-21. 
So I write it down. Then you just put all the seeds into the jar, just like so. So I've been doing lots of jars at once. I've got a big box full of jars here. So I just sit here and I put the seeds in the jars and then I'll go to the next step. So I'll do like, I think I've got like 40 jars going at once. So I'll do 40 jars. So I cut off the yucky that goes into the scrap bowl. And then this goes into, I'm gonna put this up here. This goes into the, the bag. And then I just do that with the other side. So then I've got the seeds in the jar. And I just keep doing that until I've got however many I want to do that day ready. And then we'll head out into the kitchen and I'll show you what I do from there. So it's a little later. I've got a bunch of jars filled up. And once you've got your jars filled with the seed and goo, you're gonna add some water. So it kind of depends for me how much seeds I've got as to how much water I put in, as to how much OxyClean I put in. So if I only have a little bit of seeds and a little bit of goo, I don't put a whole bunch of water, probably about three times as much of what's in here. So three times as much, I'm probably gonna fill with water to like right here. And then I'll probably use a little more OxyClean. So I have all my jars here full of their water, ready to go paper plates. I've reused these several times. You can get these at Walmart. These are just the smaller type plates. What I'll do before I get going with OxyClean is I get my plates ready. So I scratch out whatever's on there from before. So blue pear. I did blue pear. And then this jar's Big Zac Yellow. So I'll label this one. Big Zac Yellow. You can use marker, pen, whatever. Um, and then I'll do that with the rest of them. Scratch out meat breakfast. What I normally do is I probably do about seven to 10 at a time because it does take, I'd say a minute or two to rinse them. You're gonna set a timer once you've added the OxyClean for 30 minutes and another timer for 15 minutes because you're gonna wanna come and you're gonna wanna stir it up again in 15 minutes. And then at 30 minutes is when you're gonna start rinsing. And so by the time I've seen on the internet, you do it for 30 minutes, you do it for 40 minutes, somewhere in there there's been a few where i go to rinse them and i can tell that they're not ready that the gel is still kind of stuck to the seeds so then i'll just put them back in to the jar and do it for a little bit longer but for the most part 30 minutes works between 30 and 40 minutes works and you'll know you'll be able to see how clean the seeds are now we add the oxyclean so i'm going to do one, two three four five six all right now i've got the oxyclean you don't need to use a lot. The directions I read were a cup of water, a tablespoon of uh, OxyClean, but I just kind of eyeballed it. So depending upon how much seeds and water is in there is about how much I do. So I just do like a little in each jar. You don't want to do too much because then you're just gonna be left with a bunch of the granules when you go to rinse and it's a pain in the butt. I will tell you that because when I first did it first couple times I put way too much in you don't need that much then I just take a butter knife and I stir them all up I stir each one probably I don't know, 30 seconds make sure you're not carrying any seeds on your knife to the next jar so once you have the jar stirred up, you're gonna set a timer, one for 30 minutes and one for 15 minutes. You're gonna come back and the 15 minute timer goes off and stir them again, just like you did in the beginning. And you'll start to see after that first 15 minutes, they get kind of foamy and they start to foam up at the top. Um, I don't know if you can see that. But with this stirring, you really wanna make sure sometimes that foamy stuff will stick to the knife not badly you just need to make sure that you don't just go from one jar to the next okay so the 30 minutes is up now it's time to rinse them off this is what i use this tiny little colander i've gotten a few of these there i got them, i get them at the dollar tree they're 
$1.25. I like the size of them. You can rub the seeds around in it really well and the friction kind of cleans off all the yucky stuff. I'm rubbing it on the the roughness of this. I don't, know. I don't know how to explain it, but it cleans them up really well and I've used it. I used these last I used this thing last year and I'll use it this year. So and I'm just gonna take my first jar right here in the front, turn the water on, and I just pour the jar into the sieve. And this one that I'm doing is furry yellow. Um, which one is this? It's Oh, Wooly Kate Yellow. Making sure all of the seeds are out of the jar. And usually what I'll do um, is I'll, I'll wipe the jar down before I put any more seeds in it. And then you just rinse, 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 rinse and rub around. This one had quite a lot of seeds is depending on how long you'll have to do this. You'll be able to feel it. Like right now it feels kind of soapy, like there's a film. And you wanna use cold water. You don't wanna use the hot water or warm. I don't think warm water would be a big deal, but I just always use cold. And this is what you would do after you'd fermented for five to seven days. So there's only one small step that just makes this quicker. And that's the OxyClean. Keep rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Now I've got my plate and I'm just gonna take my plate and I'm gonna slap it onto there. Most of the seeds get onto the plate, but some don't. So then I'm just gonna go and make sure I've got the sieve completely cleaned out of seeds before I go on to the next one. Especially look under this little lip. because Sometimes they hide underneath there but it's all good now i've got my plate of seeds and i'll usually put these in a room where there's a fan a ceiling fan going which helps them dry quicker after a few days i will because they'll start they'll stick together after a couple days i'll go and i'll break them all up on the plate and continue to let them dry for i usually let mine dry for about a week underneath of a fan. Longer if there's no fan, but I found that putting them in a room with a fan really dries them really well. So the last step is to, once they're nice and dry, to store them. So this is from a, uh, uh, like a tackle box, right? And you, you can get something similar to this on Amazon for the same amount, but uh, my husband got this like lunchbox tackle box thing, but he uses it for a lunchbox. So I took all the inserts and I found that these that you can get at the Dollar Tree. So you get six of these little containers. I can get 10 of them across and there's four rows of them, but they just have this little cap. And what I'll do is, so I've got my seeds here nice and dry. Um, I've separated them all up and then let them dry a little bit longer, a couple more days, but they're ready to go into the case. So what I'll do, you can get these at Walmart or on Amazon just little label stickers. And what I'll do is I will label, I'll make two labels for it. So this one's cream sickle grape. And I'll put a sticker on the lid as well as the jar. That way if I'm messing with more than one jar, things don't get messed up, which could easily happen for me. One of you lovely subscribers told me to do that. So thank you for that because that would totally happen to me. And then you just put them in the jar, like so. Put the lid on, and then it'll go in one of these cases, which my cases are all full, so I've gotta get more. <laughs> and there you have it, that's how I've saved. I've got, I think, 10 of these. 10 of these cases full of seeds. <laughs> that's gonna be it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. I hope that maybe this will help you save some time. If you're crunched for time and you need to save some seeds, it'll make it quick for you. And until the next one, I hope you enjoy your day. Bye.